Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome all of you tonight to the house of the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. We're excited to be to, to get together this evening to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Would you stand with me this evening as we enter into the sanctuary and into the presence of God? The Bible says in the book of Psalms, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. So it's good and it's pleasant to be together tonight to worship the Lord together with you. We love all of you and we welcome you in Jesus' name. We welcome all that are joining us by way of the web. Let's lift our hands into the presence of the Lord. Let's invite him into this place tonight by lifting up our voices and our hearts into his holy presence. Oh, Jesus, we love you. We magnify you. You are high and lifted up. All honor and glory and praise belongs to you. Lord, we are looking forward to that moment when we stand before your throne, Jesus, to personally give you the praise that is due unto your name. But until that time, God, we're going to praise you down here on the earth. We're going to love you and live for you and give you glory. Bless your name tonight. Bless us as we worship you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen. Sing with our singers.
Praise God. We're serving an awesome God. Would you lift up your hands and worship him tonight? Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Lord, we worship you. We thank you for your presence tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, there are places where you feel at home. Uh, I was just thinking about Last year, I was going over to Bob and Lisa's house and praying with them for their family, and, and we would go and pray in their living room, and uh, Sister Lisa liked to sit in her particular chair, and Bob, he would kneel down by the couch on one side, and I'd kneel down by another couch on another side, but you could tell that Bob and Lisa were very comfortable in their living room, and you all have got your special spot here in the church, you know. Sister so-and-so's always sitting there, and brother so-and-so's always sitting over here. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think the Lord wants us to be comfortable in his house. I think he wants us to feel at home in his house. I don't think he wants us to be at, on edge and ill at ease in his house. But I think he wants us to feel welcome. And I, and I want you to feel welcome. I want you to feel at home in this place. I don't want you to feel like this is a place where you dread to come, but this needs to be a place where you love to be. Praise God, because we're going to go to heaven. We're going to, we better love being in God's presence because we're going to be there for a mighty long time. So let's love him for a moment. Let's find a comfortable spot in, in the spirit of God, and let's love him tonight. You, oh God, are an awesome God. You're a holy God. You're a, a mighty God. You're my, my closest friend, Jesus. Lord, you're the, the great God of heaven and earth. I love you. Hallelujah. Lord, I want to be close enough to you that when that trumpet sounds, I will not be alarmed, but I will be thrilled, Jesus. Lord Jesus, it will be a sound that will, that will speak a thrill and peace to my heart. Hallelujah. I want to be ready to meet you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. We welcome all of you again to the house of the Lord. We miss all of those that are gone, our pastor, and, uh, and many of our, our saints are down at General Conference in Chattanooga. God bless them tonight as they worship God, and we miss them, but we're going to have a good time here tonight. I have a good lesson tonight. I'm excited. Praise God, they only let me out every once in a while, so when they let me out of the cage, I get excited. Praise God. Amen. God bless you. We're going to receive our offering, our gifts, and our tithes tonight. Ask our video crew to put up the offering on the board. Um, praise God, if y'all can read Braille, I guess you can read it tonight. Amen. All right. <clears throat> Hallelujah. You know... Um, <clears throat> Uh, I guess we're not going to pray that prayer tonight. We'll just pray kind of a, my own prayer, all right? Praise God. You know, in heaven, everything's perfect, right? Down here on earth, everything ain't perfect. Even in the church, everything ain't perfect. You just got to live with it. Amen. You got to get used to it. Amen. The Bible uh, talks about the bitter and the sweet being mixed here on earth. You never have anything perfectly sweet or perfectly bitter. It's always mixed together somehow. Up in heaven, ladies and gentlemen, it's all going to be pure and, and lovely down here. We have troubles every once in a while, but we just get on with it and love God anyway. Praise God. Let's pray together. Uh, you can remain seated for just a moment. Let's pray together. Thank you, Jesus, for your love and goodness. Thank you, Lord, for this great church, for your great people. Thank you, Lord, for all of your blessings upon us. Lord, in your providence and in your great love, you brought us together to worship you and to give honor to you. Lord, we also honor you with the first fruits of all of our substance, our tithes and our offerings. We ask your blessings upon our families, our homes, upon us, our little ones, and all of our substance. Lord, let the blessings of God, health and strength and prosperity rest upon each of us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Now let's all stand together. Praise God. Get your money out and uh, let's prepare to give. The music's going to play, and the ushers are going to wait on you in Jesus' name. And God bless you as you do so tonight. Thank you.
good, faithful people for your support, your faithfulness, and attendance to the house of God, your prayers, your financial support, all that you do. Uh, I want you to know that it's not lost on me, and it is not lost on the Lord. <clears throat> the Bible says that God is faithful. He's going to remember your labor of love and that you minister to him and, and have ministered. Praise God for your ministry. Praise God for your faithfulness tonight. <clears throat> all right. Well, let's um, first of all dismiss our nursery class. Our nursery class may be dismissed at this time. Um, Sister Triplett and the nursery class may be dismissed. Amen. God bless them. <clears throat> and then um, our toddler class, ages two through five, with the sisters, whoever they are. God bless them for their ministry. And uh, these are the only two classes w that we will be dismissing tonight. Uh, the rest of the ages will be staying in here <clears throat> with us. <clears throat> Praise God. And uh, <clears throat> would you stand with me as we read one scripture tonight? And it is Revelation 7 and 9. In the KJV. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Would you lift a hand and pray with me? Thank you, Jesus, for this moment tonight. Thank you, Lord, for all of your dear people that are gathered here. Thank you, Lord, for your Holy Ghost presence. Lord, you said where two or three are gathered, you'd be there in the midst. So we know you're here tonight. We thank you for angels that are in attendance. We thank you for the grace of God, the mercy of God. Thank you, Lord, for the love of the brethren, our fellowship together. Pray that you will bless this message tonight. Lord, give me unction and anointing to speak what you've given to me and help me to feed these good people with spiritual food. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. I love you folks. You may be seated in Jesus' name. I started to say you may be dismissed. That would be a very quick message, wouldn't it? <laughs> I have this fear, my whole ministry, <laughs> um, <laughs> that... Uh, in one of my prayers, I would start praying over the food inadvertently, you know. <laughs> you know, just out of habit, you sometimes pray. <laughs> I heard this cute little story. Whether it's true or not, it's still a good story. <laughs> they, you know how these, they, they, uh, we Pentecostals, we have these conferences. They go on and on and on, you know. And everybody in the world testifies, and every preacher has to say something. And, and they were having one of these big conferences, and, and it was... Uh, uh, there was a Bible college that was there nearby, and they had all the Bible college students. I can understand this because I was a Bible college student uh, down in Houston, and I had to go to the general conference when it was there in Houston and, and sit there for hours, you know. And uh, so anyway, one of the Bible college students <laughs> fell asleep <laughs> while all this was going on. And we got the main speaker up there. One of his buddies elbowed him while he was asleep and said, Rick, they want you to pray over the offering. <laughs> and, the, and the main speaker had just got up to preach, you know. So Rick jumps up out of a dead sleep and starts praying. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> all right. Well, now that I've told all my stories, I forgot where I am. I don't know how you folks feel, um, but I have been sorely disappointed over these last couple of years. Um, you know, and I, I don't know how to say it, but just to say it the way it is, I, 
you know, Rush has died. Uh, President Trump has had the presidency stolen from him. Um, uh, just all kind of disappointing things have happened. Ladies and gentlemen, I refuse to watch the news. I refuse to listen to the news. I've had so much bad news, I can't stand it anymore. I have just, you know, I have just, uh, I've turned into a hippie. I've just dropped out. I refuse to participate in this stupid world. And, um, and frankly, you know, I'm, I'm holding on to Jesus, of course. But, you know, I'm just, I've just been disappointed. And, um, but I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, um, there's hope for this church. There is hope for this great church. And i got to pull myself up. And say in Jesus' name, I'm gonna I'm gonna get with the program. <laughs> and um, I want you to know that, you know, we may live through disappointing times, but I want to tell you, I believe there's great revival ahead, and I want to talk about end time revival tonight. Praise God! Somebody say Amen with me. Amen. amen. So I hope to encourage you tonight. I hope to lift you up somehow in Jesus' name. And lift myself up in the process. I'm trusting that God's going to bless what I have to say. You know, so we, I, as I have just confessed to you, I, we've, I have lived through disappointing times. I, I, I wish things were different, but I don't need God to be different. I'm just, uh, our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's not disappointing. Praise God, He hasn't lost any power. My attitude may have changed. I may be disappointed a little bit, but our God is a great God. And, and, uh, and I want you to know that we are not living in unprecedented times. Um, there have been other, other uh, periods of time where there have, there have been great fallings away or uh, apostasies, if you will, or, or things have not gone right. Um, um, and, um, but our God is able to overcome all of those things. You know, we don't have to have President Trump in the White House to be saved. All we need is Jesus on the throne. Amen? Praise God. We've still got the same God. But there have been times in our nation and in this world where times have been disappointing and even e and even evil. So I want to talk about I want to talk about the fact tonight that <clears throat> that when darkness <clears throat> covers the earth and things get rough, our God is a light, and He is greater than all of that. And it may look very dark, but our God is able to bring revival. And revival, ladies and gentlemen, is greater than anything that's going on in this world. And I want, you to, I want you to catch on to that tonight, and I want you to get a hold of that tonight, and I want it to lift you up, because ladies and gentlemen, I believe in end time revival, and I believe that we're going to see the greatest revival this world has ever seen in these last few days that are left. I, I believe in end time revival, I believe it's going to be the greatest revival that we have ever seen, and I'm going to tell you why tonight. First of all... I'm going to tell you that there have been other times when things have been disappointing. In 1735, this is before the United States was formed. 1776, if you remember, was the beginning of our nation, the Declaration of Independence. So this is some 35, uh, 41 years before we actually became the United States of America. In America... In, in not the nation, but in the American colonies, Jonathan Edwards was a great preacher, and he lamented the deterioration of society. He wrote that even children were given to night walking and tavern haunting. Now, this is in 1735, before the beginning of our nation, children were given to night walking and tavern haunting. Such drunkenness caused a commensurate increase in gambling and prostitution and public hangings were popular entertainment of the day. Now, this is in our nation. 
This is, this, this is the situation that was in our nation. But Jonathan Edwards organized a movement of prayer that changed the moral climate of America. Even old Ben Franklin observed that whereas rebellious youth had, prior to the revival, rioted in the evening, now strains of hymns could be heard from every street. At Enfield, New England in 1741, when Edwards preached his famous sermon, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God, he read every word of the transcript in his plain, unemotional manner. The paper was held six inches from his eyes because of his nearsightedness. However, one of the prayer groups that he had organized had spent the entire night in the sanctuary in prayer for revival, and many attribute the results, which were elders and men and women holding on to the pillars and pews of the church, crying, God, help me. I'm falling into the pit. Not so much to what Edwards read and said as to the prayer room that was bathed, that bathed the atmosphere into which these words were spoken. Indeed, that prayer effort called Colonial America back to her moorings. Ladies and gentlemen, it was a very deep and dark and desperate day, but revival because of prayer changed America and brought about the revolution, the revolution and our separation and our independence from England. In the great revival of 1800, there was an unprecedented moral slump following the American Revolution. Drunkenness was epidemic. Out of a population of 5 million people, 300,000 were confirmed drunkards. Profanity was of the most shocking kind. For the first time in the history of America, women were afraid to go out at night. Bank robberies were, an, were a regular occurrence. Not only had the great revival of 1735 that we just discussed been discounted by the world, but wickedness in general reached such a crescendo that men of the cloth, ministers, were despairing about the future of Christendom. The great church historian of those day, days, Kenneth Scott, wrote, It seems that Christianity is about to be ushered out of the affairs of mankind. The Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court, John Marshall, a concerned believer, wrote Methodist Bishop Madison of Virginia his assessment. The church is too far gone to ever be redeemed. This was, eight in, this was 1800. Such an absence of Christianity gave rise to the grand era of American agnosticism. The famous atheist Voltaire was adamantly declaring Christianity will be forgotten in 30 years. And the agnostic Tom Paine was joyfully echoing his sentiments all across America to interested listeners. They feared that Christianity would, would be forgotten in 30 years. But in June 1800, a Presbyterian pastor, John McGrady, called for a community-wide observance of the Lord's Supper at his little one-room church called Red River Presbyterian. By the way, I personally visited that church in my research. A multitude arrived in that, in that, at that spring meeting, and they packed the building and surrounded it. On the final day of these three days of solemn, solemn soul-searching, a Methodist pastor, John McGee, was asked to preach. He observed that people were breaking up. He politely went and spoke to a lady about regaining her composure. He said to her, you know these people. These Presbyterians are much for order. They will not bear this confusion. Go back to your seat and be quiet. I turned to go back to the pulpit and was near falling. The power of God was so strong upon me. I turned again, and losing the sight of the fear of man, I ran through the house shouting and exhorting with all possible ecstasy and energy, and the floor was soon covered with those slain in the spirit. Their screams for mercy pierced the heavens. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this revival exploded across Kentucky and more than 11,000 people gathered to that little one-room church before it was all over to seek God. Revival fires burned across the prairie and the frontier. 25,000 people gathered at Cane Ridge, Kentucky, just 12 miles outside of Lexington. I have visited that site also in my research. 25,000 people gathered, some from as far as Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 450 miles on horseback. They came to the revival. They, they rode their horses. They came in buggies. As preachers preached, 500 people would suddenly collapse under the Spirit's power and lay motionless and almost breathless for hours. Right there, that spot right there, I was praying and talking to God about this. I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, as I was researching all of this, I was standing right there and I said, God, how, how could it be that those people would, would, would not breathe for hours? It seemed like the Lord spoke to me and said, ah, in heaven, you don't have to breathe. Praise God. Caught up into the presence of God. <clears throat> The governor, of, the governor of the state of Kentucky attended this revival, was filled with the Holy Ghost and called to the ministry. So ladies and gentlemen, the darkest of times can end in mighty revival. Praise God. The revival of 1900, again, you know, we have revival and then declension. Revival and then declension. It's, it's, the, it's, it's, the, it's mankind. It's just the way we are. And so we had the revival of 1800, the revival of 1850 under Charles Finney, and now the revival of 1900. Spiritual decadence pervaded society in the late 1890s. Corruption, immorality, drunkenness, cults, gambling, and agnosticism rose, arose in proportion to the church's ineptness. By the turn of the 20th century, the glory had departed. The saints had defected. The salt had lost its savor, and the world had lost its, its light of God, and deep moral darkness prevailed. The flag-waving, sin-hating, mercy-loving believers of the mid-1800s had been replaced by inert and immovable in name only Christians. <clears throat> there is an outcry of a public aghast at a seeming tidal wave of immorality breaking over the land. This is in the 19, early 1900s. On every hand, the late 1800s, early 1900s. On every hand, political corruption is rife. Does that sound like us? On every hand, political corruption is rife. Divorce and lax marital relations, fornication and adultery scandalized the nation. In great cities like New York and Chicago, murders, suicide, hold up, holdups crowd upon each other's heels. The newspapers every morning are records of a carnival of crime. <clears throat> it was a dark day. But in Topeka, Kansas, a Bible college class had been studying about the baptism the, of the Holy Ghost. And in an all-night prayer meeting on New Year's Eve, 1900-1901, a young lady, just one young lady, received the Holy Ghost and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance as the old year went out and the new year came in. This one tongue of fire began to burn. It spread to the West Coast at a little mission called the Azusa Street Mission where hundreds received the Holy Ghost. The fire then spread eastward to the East Coast. The awakening rolled through the South like a tidal wave, packing churches for prayer and confession. The average church of that time, an average church of that time, First Baptist Church in Paducah, Kentucky, took in 1,000 new members in two months. The elder pastor, Dr. J.J. Cheek, died of exhaustion. He was not the only pastor to succumb to the demands of so many people. Every store in, and factory closed in Burlington, Iowa to prevent employees to attend services of intercession and dedication. Denver closed down. The mayor of Denver declared a day of prayer. By 10 a.m., churches were filled. 
at 11.30, almost every store was closed. 12,000 attended prayer meetings in downtown theaters and halls. Every school was closed. The Colorado legislature closed for prayer. Now schools are closed for COVID. From Atlantic City in the northeast to Oregon in the northwest, the dry bones were shaken. They stood on their feet and they proclaimed Jesus Christ to be Lord. Have you ever seen a picture of the sign in Portland, Oregon? Jesus is Lord. That sign was there for over 80 years. My, my dear wife, when she was a little girl, when they would, uh, you know, she's from Pendleton in eastern part of Oregon, a very small town. And they would go to Portland to shop for school. And they would go and, and they would use that sign, Jesus is Lord. That was their marker. That's where the hotel was. Jesus is Lord. That's, that's where the hotel is. That, that sign was there for many, many. It was, it was a landmark of Portland. Of course, now Portland is landmarked by rioters. <clears throat> Jesus is not Lord. Rioters are taking over. But in Portland, in those days, in Portland, 240 department stores signed an agreement to close from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. daily to permit everyone to attend prayer meeting. Praise God. Downtown Portland shut down for prayer meeting every day. In Los Angeles, for two years, extraordinary prayer meetings for revival were held at the First Baptist Church in Los Angeles. When the Holy Ghost fell, throngs marched in the streets to celebrate revival coming to Los Angeles. Open-air meetings attracted crowds of nearly 200,000. Ladies and gentlemen, we may be in dark days, but our God is still able. Hallelujah. And other folks have gone through dark days, but our God is still able to pour out his Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, would you lift your hands with me? I want to worship God for a moment. Come on, he's greater than any darkness that there is. In him is light and there is no, no darkness at all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. We need you, Jesus. Oh, oh God. Oh, Jesus, we need you. We need revival, God. Oh, God, my heart hungers. Oh, after you, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so in our day, though it seems we are surrounded by sin and our nation's culture is collapsing, I believe we are on the cusp of the greatest revival the world has ever seen. I want to say that again. Though we are surrounded by darkness, I believe that we are on the cusp of the greatest revival the world has ever seen. <clears throat> I want to talk from the Word of God tonight about my reasons why I believe this. Ecclesiastes 1 and 9, my first reason is this. Ecclesiastes 1 and 9 says, The thing that hath been, all right, those things that happened that I just read to you, the thing that hath been, America fell into deep darkness, the thing that hath been is the thing which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no, no new thing under the sun. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when deep darkness fell upon this nation, through prayer, God sent revival to those people. And the thing which hath been is the thing which shall be. You can't tell me that God sent revival to those generations, and he cannot send it to us. We may be surrounded by darkness, but our God is greater than that darkness in this day. Go ahead. Give God praise. And God is no respecter of persons. And if God sent revival to those people and he doesn't send it to us, then he is a respecter of persons. But he is not a respecter of persons. So I believe if we will ask, we will receive. And I'm going to quit my whining 
and I'm going to get up and start praying for revival again. I'm going to quit whining about the darkness. I'm going to quit whining about people sinning. And I'm going to get up and I'm going to start praying. I'm going to believe God for revival in my day. Come on. I want you to believe with me. Revival in my day. Revival in our day. Praise God. The thing which hath been is the thing which shall be. Ladies and gentlemen, what God did then for them, he's going to do for us. 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, which are called by my name. Come on will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear, hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. If we'll only humble ourselves and start asking, God will hear from heaven and he will heal our land. Praise God. And so I believe our God is just the same yesterday, today, and forever. I believe we can have revival if we will ask for it. Praise God. Don't tell me the devil is too big and too bad. I ain't buying it. Let me hurry on. I, that's my first re reason. <clears throat> Secondly, uh, we are living in dark times. I want to go to Revelation 16 <clears throat> and uh, 10. And it, I'm not going to turn there, but it simply says this. Revelation 16 and 10. And the beast kingdom was full of of darkness the antichrist is coming he will he will his kingdom is going to be enveloped in darkness but i want you to, but i want you to listen and 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 people ladies and gentlemen now you know oh god we're going we're 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 headed toward the great tribulation oh god it's going to get terrible oh god the whole world is going to fall before the beast no the whole world ladies and gentlemen is not going to fall before the beast i know i know it says all the world worshiped after the beast but it also tells us that there are some nations that he will be angry with because they will not follow him there's going to be those that resist the beast ladies and gentlemen there's going to be those that are going to fight against the beast and i plan on being one of them i plan on being one of them the beast kingdom was full of darkness but i'm going to resist that in jesus name now, I'm going to read Zechariah 14 and, uh, and, and chapter, and Zechariah 14 and verse number 5. And it says, now, now I want you to listen carefully to this. This is 5b, the second part of the verse. And the Lord my God shall come and all the saints with thee. Now, we're talking about the time of the second coming of Jesus. Now, read it again. And the Lord my God shall come and all the saints with thee. So we're talking about the time of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Zechariah 14 and 5. Let's keep reading. And that shall come to pass in that day, in the days when it's time for Jesus to appear, it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark, but it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass, listen, that at the evening time it shall be light. And in the side notes here, I re realize that this is, not, this is not inspired, but it says spiritual darkness, spiritual light, spiritual darkness, spiritual light, living waters. Praise God. In the days when it's time for Jesus to return, there shall be light. I know the beast kingdom is full of darkness, but I also know that there's going to be light somewhere. There's going to be light somewhere, ladies and gentlemen. I want it to be here in this church. I want it to be in Clinton, Tennessee. I want the light to shine in Tennessee. I want the light to shine in the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, I want revival. Hallelujah. In the days of the coming of the Lord, revival is going to be in the world spiritual light in the days of the return of jesus listen i want to tell you this i wrote this down in my notes the church is not going to be hunkered down in some corner cowering in fear of the antichrist just hoping to hold on till jesus comes that's not the life i intend to live you're not going to find me hunkered down in some corner saying oh jesus come quickly save my heart that ain't me and that ain't you ladies and gentlemen hallelujah we are 
going to have revival. At the evening time, there shall be light. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. It's time to lift ourselves up. Come on, lift up your attitude. Lift up your hands. Lift up your faith. Hallelujah. And boy, am I preaching to myself tonight. Hallelujah. Now, light, praise God, at the, at the first coming of Jesus. It says this, the people which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them which sat in the region of the shadow of death, light is sprung up. Let me read it again. The people which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. When Jesus arrived in this dark world, light sprung up. And from that time, Jesus began to preach and say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And ladies and gentlemen, darkness may be trying to overtake this world, but Jesus is coming back and light is going to shine. Hallelujah. Praise God. The light is never going to over. The darkness is never going to overcome the light. So at the second return of Jesus, there will be great light also. <clears throat> Let us go on. In Revelation chapter number 7 now, I want to talk about this great end time revival. <clears throat> Hurry in. Revelation chapter number 7, after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And they were sealed in 144,000 of the tribes of the children of Israel. I will not read all of this, but what I'm saying to you, I'm going to have to ask you to just please allow me to say this part without laying a great big long 20-minute foundation. And But I just want to say that what this is tonight, this is the revival, this is the beginning of the revival of the Jews the beginning of the revival of the Jews, beginning to uh, th this messianic hope arising in their hearts and God's spirit falling upon them, their eyes being opened and they're being filled with the Holy Ghost. They're sealed with the spirit of promise. They're washing their robes in the blood of the Lamb. Ladies and gentlemen, they're being born again of the Spirit. It's the beginning of Jewish revival. Praise God. I'm talking about end time revival. Now, <clears throat> What I want, to, I want to say tonight is this. I want to parallel. I want to parallel this great end time revival with the outpouring of the Holy Ghost in the book of Acts. Praise God. So in this great end time revival of Revelation chapter number 7, we see Jews being sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Who was it that first received the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost? Somebody help me. Who? What, what, what group of people received the Holy Ghost first on the day of Pentecost? It was Jews. And so, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm wanting to say tonight is that what we see in the book of Acts happening, and praise God, we shout and we go, oh, glory to God, I wish I'd have been there in the book of Acts and seen all of that happen. Brothers I'm gonna preach, and sisters, I'm going to preach to you tonight that you're going to see it all again. It's going to happen again in our time. Praise God. It, God, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. It's going to begin with the Jews just like it did back in those days. Oh, God, would somebody shout with me? Hallelujah. I believe this great end time revival is going to start in Jerusalem with the Jews, and this world is going to be evangelized. Did you know? We find it in my nose. Did you know that in Romans 11 and 26, Paul said, And so all Israel shall be saved. I want to ask you tonight, how do you get saved? Somebody, somebody tell me. What's the three things you got to do? Well, five things. 
First, you got to have faith in God. But what do you got to do? What's the first thing you got to do? You got to repent. What's the next thing you got to do to be saved? Get baptized in what? In Jesus' name, in water. And then what do you got to do? Get filled with the Holy Ghost. The one that wrote, and so all Israel shall be saved, is Paul, who said, I thank my God I speak with tongues more than y'all. I believe Paul was saying, every one of them Jews is going to get the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I believe I'm going to go crazy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, you Paul, I, I mean, the, the book of Revelation, I believe here, is telling us that there's going to be a great end time revival that's going to begin in Jerusalem with the Jews and that mighty revival of 144,000 it starts with 144,000 Paul says all Israel shall be saved praise God there's going to begin a mighty Jewish revival would you lift your hands and give God glory tonight praise God hallelujah hallelujah now I want to I want to go on I got to hurry Let's, let's, let's go on. Now, now, let's go to Revelation 11. There was given unto me a reed like unto a rod. Now, I, I just got to say quickly, that, 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 that Jewish revival, now let me not muck up the waters. Praise God for Jewish revival. Let me keep going. Revelation 11. And there was given unto me a rod, reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple, leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months, or three and a half years. I'm just going to say it real quickly. I've been to the Temple Mount, and there ain't no temple there. But there is going to be a temple there, because this Bible says there it is. So they're fixing to build the temple over there. It's going to happen very soon. And ladies and gentlemen, and then the Jews are going to start worshiping there. They can't even worship there right now. But there is going to be a temple. And it says the holy city shall they tread underfoot for 40 and two months. So what, what the scripture is saying is that Gentiles are going to have control of this area. So all I got to say is that's going to last for three and one half years. So let me just let me just say these things, and you can you can start studying, and to see if I'm telling the truth or not. But what apparently is going to happen is that there's going to be a peace agreement that's signed between the Jews and and the Palestinians and all all these other nations, and they're going to say, okay, we're going to share the Temple Mount. You can build your temple there, and they're going to build their temple and they're going to start their sacrifice. All right. Now this is this is in what city? Jerusalem, where did the Holy Ghost first get poured out? Jerusalem. Jerusalem. All right, let me read now. So this is talking about the first half of what we normally call the Great Tribulation. The temple is built. Verse 3, I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. And so there are two witnesses that preach and they prophesy. Let me keep reading. Um, Verse 5, if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth. <clears throat> Verse 6, these have power to shut up heaven, that it rain not. They have power over waters. They have power to preach and smite the earth with plagues as often as they will. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, these people have power. These two witnesses got power. Power to shut up the heavens. Power to call down fire. Power to preach. Power to bring in plagues. They got power, 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 power. What did Jesus say in Acts chapter number 1, verse number 8? Ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. These two witness have, witnesses have got Holy Ghost power. I don't think they're anything more than two great anointed Holy Ghost filled men. Great preachers. I believe, ladies and gentlemen, if you go back to the book of Acts, who do you see? Peter and John. In Acts chapter number 3, two witnesses, Peter and John, went up to the temple at the hour of prayer, being about the ninth hour, and they saw a lame man. Peter said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He had power to heal people. Praise God. I believe we're seeing 
Amen. Two witnesses in our days. I've heard people say, well, it's going to be Moses and Elijah. It's going to be Enoch and I don't know. Uh, it's going to be Batman and Robin. I don't know who it is. They, they, there's been all kind of guesses, all kind of things. But ladies and gentlemen, I just believe it's two great Holy Ghost filled preachers. Praise God. Full of faith. Full of power. Praise God. And they're preaching in Jerusalem just like Peter and John did. Hallelujah. I'm talking about apostolic revival, just like the book of Acts in our day. Hallelujah. They're preaching mightily. They're performing miracles. They're bringing revival to Jerusalem. They're resisting the Antichrist and his policy, policies. <clears throat> now, remember the words of Jesus at the beginning of this gospel age, Luke 24, 47. And that... Re repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name beginning at Jerusalem. So ladies and gentlemen, I believe this great end time revival is beginning again. It's going to begin again at Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Here we see it. Two witnesses calling down fire out of heaven. Praise God. P calling down plagues. Caught, stopping the rain. Doing whatever they want to do by the power of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And the Antichrist is going to hate him because they're going to resist his policies. They're, they're going to expose his lies. The Antichrist is going to hate these guys. Praise God. And so, ladies and gentlemen, great revival, again, beginning at Jerusalem in the last days. I want to say something. When you hear from now on, when you hear the words great tribulation, I want the thing to pop right in your brain and say, ooh, great revival. Everybody's all worried about the tribulation. Praise God. It needs to pop into your brain. Oh, great tribulation. Great revival. Praise God. There's going to be great revival. Amen. Greater than what the devil's doing. Come on. Let's praise God. Amen. Let's believe it. Hallelujah. Let's praise God. Let's believe it. I want to hurry. Let's go to Revelation 7. I know what I'll do. I'll quit right in the middle of this, and then you guys will make Brother Miller make, give me another chance. <laughs> I know. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> You'll say, please throw Brother Tripler the, a, a bite of red meat and let him out of that cage. Let him preach again. <laughs> All right. So, so that's the beginning, the Jewish revival. Now listen to this now. Listen, this is my opening scripture. Listen. Of the, of the Jews were sealed 12,000, 12,000, 12,000, 12,000. Whether that's an actual number or a representative number, we, I do not know. But let me say, okay. But now, listen, listen, listen. The next verses, listen. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations. Well, wait a minute. Not just Jews. It's not the Jews. Of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Every nation, all nations, all kindreds, all tongues, and they cried with a loud voice, verse 10, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and under the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom. Thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, Listen, these are they which came out of great tribulation. They have washed their robes. Where have they washed them? They washed them white in the blood of the Lamb. They are saints that are repented, baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, just like we are. And they have lived through the tribulation. There's been great revival. Multitude, listen, which no man could number. Hallelujah. There's going to be great end time revival. These are people, no man could number the ones that were in the tribulation. Praise God. 
Acts 2 and 15. No, notice here, it says this was a great multitude out of all nations. Acts 2 and 15, when the Holy Ghost was poured out, the Bible says there were dwelling in Jerusalem men out of every nation in Jerusalem. Men out of every nation. So here, would you stand with me and I'll be quiet. Men out of every nation. So I believe that the Acts revival is going to happen again, once again, only to a, 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 an exponentially greater degree than we can ever imagine. I believe there's going to be worldwide revival. In Revelation 11, the two witnesses preach and perform miracles. In Acts chapter number 3, Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer. The two witnesses performed miracles. How about Peter and John? They saw the lame man and, and healed him. In Acts chapter number 5, verses 4, 14 through 16, the shadow of Peter passing over people would heal them. Great miracles. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen? There's going to be camera crews following these two, multi, these two witnesses around. And they're going to be performing miracles. The whole world is going to see this. I want to read one more verse. I want to read more. I got pages more, but let me read one more. It says in Acts 5 and 11, all these things, great fear came upon the city of Jerusalem. Listen, the attitude of people right now, God's going to change their stinking attitude. There's people, they don't care about church, they don't care about, you, they'll laugh about God or whatever, you, you tell them. But ladies and gentlemen, great fear came upon that city, and great fear is going to come upon this world. There's going to be worldwide revival. Hearts are going to be opened. Hallelujah. Hearts are, hearts are going to be opened by the Spirit of God. You know, God can do God can do something on your stinking heart in one minute that I could not do in, in one lifetime. The Bible speaks in the book of Acts of Lydda, whose heart the Lord opened. You know, God is able to open the heart of entire nation and bring revival. Praise God. And so I believe, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that the book of Acts revival is going to be repeated in these end times only to a much greater degree. And I believe we ought to lift up our heads. Come on, would you lift up your hands now? Let's worship God. Let's praise Him for hope tonight. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, there is a great, great hope before us. Hallelujah. Lord, there are greater things than we could ever imagine. Lord, there are, there are things I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. There are greater things than we could ever imagine, God. Hallelujah. Lord, there's going to be great worldwide revival among the Jews and among the Gentiles. Jesus, Jesus, we worship you. Lord, let's, let's pray for our own families, God. Our families that are lost, bring them in. Lord, souls that are astray, God, bring them back. Lord Jesus, those, that, Lord, that need your holy touch, God. Lord, send revival into this church. Send revival into this pre preacher's heart. Lord, cleanse me, wash me. Oh, make my attitude right. Give me faith, oh God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. I love you folks. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.